So as you say, Eurocontrol is a pan-European organization composed of 41 plus two member states, including Francopol Israel and Ukraine. So you can think that the, the current situation is quite, uh, uh, I would say, dense and, and uh, I would say, uh, worrying for us. So we are on the front line to implement uh, the sanctions taken by the states to, to uh, related to aviation. So here we are going to speak about uh, something that um, is, uh, I would say, important to us, which is how to improve the ability to attribute a cyber attack to, to an APT. So um, I will do that together with uh, Bartiar, and with uh, also in my team. So next slide, please. So the objective is really to, uh, I would say, improve uh, the, the way we can attribute uh, an attack. You know that aviation is a critical infrastructure, so we are subject to kind of uh, strategic threats, meaning quite often quite well identified uh, EPTs. And um, what we are concerned is uh, the fact that uh, it's not an obsession attribution, but it's part of one element that could help us to better understand who is behind and therefore who could else could be a target and also what could be the motivation and therefore the, the likelihood of other potential um, uh, cyber attacks. So we'll develop a, a two-step approach that Bartial will, uh, will uh, describe into more detail, which is based on a kind of, uh, I would say, a static approach on the software, which is mechanically, if I may say so, considering the, the MITRE attack TTPs. Huh? We are quite fond of MITRE attack at, uh, at uh, Eurocontrol. Huh? We hosted um, a regional event and we are working a lot on it, promoting it. So this uh, tool is kind of uh, mechanically thing based on the number of TTPs. This is the, the likelihood that uh, a certain APT is behind, but we find that this was not necessary and uh, we are about to develop um, an AI ML application to use the context and therefore to refine the uh, the, the, the potential attribution of uh, a cyber attack to APT. And you will see that for that, we need your cooperation. Therefore, we, we will um, uh, ask you to, to help us for that in a kind of innovative way, which is um, not traditional in AI, where usually you share the data to train the model, but more to share the model because the data can't be trained, can't be shared. And more than that, we don't want to, to, to get those data being shared. It will be a nightmare. So we'll hand over to Bartia. We describe that into uh, to more detail and I will take care. Uh, uh, the, the concluding slide. Over to you, Bartia. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Bartia Mustafa. I am also a T, uh, part, uh, part of the EATM CERT team. Uh, I hope you can see my correct screen. Uh, if not, please tell me. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So, uh, as Patrick explained, uh, we are trying to uh, create some uh, tool or techniques to better attribute. The, uh, one of the problems in cybersecurity is attribution. I'll talk about it in details. And uh, we created a two-step approach. We first uh, created a tool that is called EFIT, uh, Adversary, uh, Adva uh, Adversary Finder Tool. Uh, which utilizes uh, MITRE attack framework uh, database and um, creates an estimation uh, for an APT group. And then we move to uh, ML uh, and machine learning approach. <clears throat> As you all know, uh, one of the popular topics or one of the uh, important things is the APT groups. Uh, there are many different APT groups with uh, fancy names, uh, let's say, like uh, Cozy Beer, Star, Stardust, Colima, Helix Kitten, uh, etc. There are uh, different naming con uh, conventions from different vendors. Mm, someone is using uh, animal names like CrowdStrike, someone is using uh, numbering, uh, some are using some other naming conversions. But just to give you an idea, uh, this is the naming convention from CrowdStrike. Uh, and the different animal names actually point uh, to a different uh, regions, let's say, or uh, nation states. Uh, for example, if there is a kitten in the name, uh, probably it is a, a Iranian APT group. It is either affiliated with a nation state or a criminal group that is sponsored or supported by uh, Iranian uh, state. If we see a beer, uh, which is popular nowadays, it, it means that it is probably uh, a group that is affiliated or supported by a Russian Federation. Uh, just to give you an idea, one of the popular groups nowadays is uh, APT29 
or uh, known as also Cosbeer. Uh, as I say, different uh, vendors are using a different naming conventions, but the idea is to address to a certain group that is targeting uh, other nations or other sectors. Uh, for example, if you look at the uh, APT29 or Cozy Beer, uh, this is the Mitre Attack uh, information page uh, for uh, APT29. You can see the link below. So if you want to look at the uh, more detail, you can uh, see at the Mitre web website. Uh, here you can see uh, the associated groups or uh, known different names, uh, also uh, some other uh, information. Uh, in details, we also see the different tools and techniques uh, that are used by this group. Uh, these uh, TTPs are formed by different vendors over the years by observing their uh, attack techniques, uh, observing their behaviors, and is built a model for every APT. And also they are using a different software. Some of them is commercial. Some of them is uh, their uh, own uh, developed software. <clears throat> for example, uh, some of APT groups are using a Cobalt Strike, which is actually a commercial tool that is also used for a penetration testing or uh, red teaming activities. So the idea is every APT group is uh, having a model that includes uh, TTPs or uh, software that it is use, using. And this is the Mitre Attack uh, framework model for APT29 uh, TTPs, tools, techniques, and procedures. The boxes that are marked in blue are uh, actual uh, TTPs that are used by uh, APT29 in every step of their uh, attack chain. So, uh, how we can use that information for attribution? It is not easy, and this is the problem actually that we are trying to solve. Uh, the main idea is uh, by observing a data or observing a, a TTPs uh, to, uh, from attacks uh, that are ex extracted from attacks targeting our organization, like extracting a firewall logs, IPS, etc., to build a model and estimate uh, what is the group, uh, APT group behind these attacks. Uh, of course, uh, in an internet world, it is not uh, possible to uh, be a hundred percent sure uh, because there are many evasion techniques like using a, a fake IP addresses, using a different keyboard layout, etc. But uh, our tool is help to, to help you estimate. Uh, as I say, it's not possible to 100%. Uh, <clears throat> and if you are able to uh, predict or estimate the APT group, it will help to uh, better prepare us uh, in defense uh, side, let's say, and it will help us to build a tactical operational or strategic defense uh, strategies, let's say. Uh, of course, uh, this is also helpful to separate uh, APT activities from other uh, criminal groups, let's say, because uh, in uh, current, uh, current status, uh, we see a lot of uh, communication about the APT groups or underground groups that are uh, either against or uh, with some of the states, with the Russia or with the Ukraine. But we, if we are not able to correctly estimate or predict what, what is the attacker, maybe uh, the attacks that we are observing to our infrastructure is not from APT groups, but maybe it is from uh, some opportunistic uh, hacker that wants to benefit from the current climate and uh, get some benefits, let's say. So this is the main idea behind uh, our work. And uh, first, uh, we try to uh, estimate the APT by looking the um, uh, tools, techniques, and procedures that we observe. 
And as I say, it's not easy just by looking at uh, this list uh, to estimate and say, uh, to answer the question, uh, what is this group? And to make it worse, um, if we have a partial information, let's say some of the TTPs are missing, uh, the answer is uh, harder. So we cannot easily estimate. And as a solution, uh, we propose a two-step approach uh, with the data-driven APT attribution. Uh, it should be based on a, a attacks that we observe to our uh, infrastructure. At the first step, we developed a tool that is called AFIT, Adversary Finder Tool, let's say. It's a free tool uh, that was first uh, developed internally uh, by EATM CERT. It uses the uh, APT groups database from uh, Mitre Attack. It uses the latest Mitre Attack framework and the latest uh, APT da database. Uh, just to show uh, how the Mitre Attack is used, because uh, Mitre Attack framework is, is very uh, important framework, but mm, it is not easy to use it, uh, let's say. And uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the main purpose of the tool is to uh, build a list of the TTPs like this one and using this one to have some sort of estimation to some degree and say that uh, with these uh, TTPs, uh, we can estimate that these are the possible groups that are attacking uh, our organization. Uh, I'll show you some screenshots uh, of our tool. So we start with the blank tool. It's not very uh, fancy, let's say. It's just a desktop application uh, coded in Python, uh, with the GUI and the background. It uses some Neo4j for uh, relationship building. First, we start with the inputting uh, TTPs by ID or by name. So <coughs> we... Uh, just put a list. It can be imported from text file or it can be put uh, one by one, uh, either by ID from uh, Vitra Attack Framework or uh, by name. And once the list is built uh, using Mitre uh, APT database, we create the estimation, let's say. So if you have uh, 11 uh, TTPs, uh, here we see the estimation of three possible, uh, with the highest possibility, these are, these are the most possible APT groups, APT 32, uh, Chimera and Oil Rig, because uh, from these 11 TTPs that we input, uh, four of them matches to uh, the profile of this uh, APT group. So with 36% uh, percent, uh, confidence, we, we can say, these are the possible groups. As I say, it's not possible to say 100% this is the group uh, unless you, are, uh, you have some other intelligence. Uh, but the more data we put in that tool, the more TTPs we put in that tool, the uh, estimation ratio increases, as you can imagine. And uh, once the estimation is built, we can get some more information about uh, the uh, estimated groups. Uh, for example, we can get some more details, uh, which TTPs uh, are matching to this profile. <laughs> also, uh, we can go directly to the Mitre Attack Framework uh, website that is explaining uh, and uh, containing all the information about this threat group. Uh, also, we can build a relationship uh, schema. Uh, here we see the relationship with the other uh, related APT groups. Uh, here, for example, this APT group is related with uh, Emishiri Panda, uh, Bronze Union, APT 29, uh, Iron uh, Tiger, etc. Also, we can build a, a relationship with all the TTPs that this threat group is using. So it can help us visually to uh, see what is possible, what are the uh, next uh, possible attacks. Uh, if this is the real group uh, behind the attacks. Uh, also, 
we can uh, uh, this can help uh, us in the defense side in the mitigations so uh, once we uh, input a list of the uh, ttps uh, we can build a mitigations this is also a cross reference from a mitral attack framework uh, and basically looking at uh, this table we can uh, prioritize our defenses because these are the mitigation uh, mitigations that are uh, specifically mentioned in these attack uh, techniques. Uh, another uh, feature is uh, building a relationship map, uh, map using a Neo4j uh, database and uh, features. So basically, with the uh, list of the TTPs, it creates a, a map. Uh, the orange one are APT groups and the blue one are uh, tools, techniques, and procedures that are utilized in uh, our attack. So uh, this is the tool. Uh, it is currently working, as I say, as a desk desktop application. It's a free tool. Uh, if you want to use it, just uh, drop me an email. Uh, in the next days, we are planning to also put it in our uh, GitHub uh, page. And uh, you can use it, no need to share any data with us, but if you want to uh, contribute to the code or to the quality, you can uh, report us any uh, bugs. <clears throat> so this is the first step. The second step is using a uh, machine learning uh, to improve uh, contribution, uh, attribution. So the basic idea is to uh, develop a machine learning application that is constantly scanning a free text or intelligence report that may not include a list of uh, TTPs. And from uh, that intelligence report or that uh, free text, extract uh, TTPs, build a list of data, structure it, and then uh, again, uh, build the estimation model for uh, context and for uh, APT groups. Uh, as Patrick indicated, we, uh, we are very uh, focused on uh, uh, collaboration. And for that purpose, we also uh, investigating uh, possible co collaborations without sharing the data. Uh, one of the examples uh, is FedEM project. It is developed by Scale-Out Systems and it's an open source project. Uh, in that project, uh, every participant uh, has its own data and its own machine learning uh, application. And uh, once you create a machine learning models, uh, only the models are shared uh, with, each, with each other uh, and you don't have to uh, share your data, uh, which is uh, obviously not very easy in cybersecurity. Uh, there are two different models. Uh, the first one, uh, the frozen mode, you just uh, consume, uh, you connect to the uh, sharing model uh, server, uh, download the model and uh, run it locally in your uh, organization and uh, then uh, use your data to uh, enrich and detect some patterns inside your data. This is the first mode. The second one is enriching mode. In that mode, you uh, again call, uh, connect to the server, download the uh, machine learning models, uh, train using your own data. And uh, if you're uh, using your da data, the model is enriched or uh, enhanced, uh, then uh, you, you can share that enriched model or uh, improve the model on the server. So everyone can benefit uh, from uh, the enrichment on your side without sharing the data. So uh, this is an example of the application. We are still uh, working on it. Uh, we just started. Uh, so the, the idea is if you have uh, such an intelligence report from uh, commercial CTI vendors or from uh, our internal teams, uh, using that application, it will automatically uh, detect the TTPs like the phishing, the spear phishing attachment, the PowerShell, uh, domain fronting and usage of the specific software for attachment and uh, the context. What is the target region or what's the target country? 
Also, what is the timing information? Uh, is it related to some uh, events that are happening at a certain point of time uh, or a cer certain region? So this is the idea to automatically extract the information from free text and uh, structure it and then estimate uh, what are the attacking groups or what's the APT behind that attacks. So uh, this is a call for cooperation. Uh, I tried to say in other slides, but again, uh, both in a fit tool and a ML application, uh, we can collaborate without sharing the data. Uh, and uh, if you want, you can participate and uh, enrich that activities. Um, so I hand over to Patrick. No? Yes, so thank you, Bartian. So I think for us, what is really important, as you can see, is that uh, um, we are also interested in, uh, in your cooperation for the benefit of the community in order to, to share the models once enriched. And now I'm sitting on this notion of federated learning, which is for us the only way to, pro to proceed. I mean, it's impossible to get the data being shared. Uh, we don't, it's not possible that we don't want. So that's really important for us to, to, to have this approach uh, with your uh, successful, with your contribution, meaning that you can enrich on your own uh, data set. You know, there are two aspects in uh, machine learning. The training is really a dedicated, uh, uh, quite touchy, uh, I would say, uh, step. Uh, you need a lot of documents on which you have already, I would say, good confidence that with kind of TTPs you have attributed to a certain uh, groups. And so that, that would be the way to enrich uh, the model and the, the broader, I would say, the, the participant, the, the, the better the, the, the model, the more performant uh, the, the model, because it would be based on various types of cyber attack, various uh, groups. So we see a, a benefit uh, into that. And again, uh, your control, we're not a commercial entity. Uh, we are a pan-European international intergovernmental organization. Therefore, we will share the outcome of that uh, free of charge uh, is for the benefit of uh, the community. So it's... Um, uh, I would say something for us that is uh, aiming at uh, supporting aviation and uh, beyond aviation, uh, the, the community. So it's a call for cooperation. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't know if we have time for questions. Or if we take them on the... Up to you. Over to you. Thank you very much.